Hi. Now in this video I want to discuss the motion of a particle attached to a light inextensible string moving in a vertical circle at the point when the string becomes slack. So if the particle is hanging in equilibrium and then it's given a large enough impulse it starts to move in complete circles as we've just seen. However, if you give it a small enough impulse, it might not be sufficient for it to complete a revolution. We'll do it again here. Give it a small impulse, the particle collapses in towards the centre. If we do it in slow motion, you can see that the particle rises and then the string becomes slack here and the particle then collapses in towards the centre. It leaves its circular path. So when you're doing problems like this, I would suggest that you draw a diagram. And let's say we've got a circle, radius r, and the particle starts from down here. And at this point up here, the string goes slack and it collapses in. So if we call this point A and we'll call this point B, then what we've got is that at B, the string goes slack. In other words, there's going to be no tension. And we could find that we give this an impulse at the bottom here. It acquires a velocity. Let's say that velocity is the velocity at A, VA. And it's going to move around the circle to this point B here. It's not going to come to rest at this point. It's still moving. So we'll say that the velocity here is VB. Now because it's moving in a circle up to this point, there's always going to be an acceleration directed towards the centre of the circle, directed towards O. So we'll mark that in. Okay, we'll just put a double arrow there. And that acceleration we should be familiar with is v squared over the radius. But v here is the speed of b at this point. So it's going to be vb squared. Hope you can see that. Okay, vb squared over r for that acceleration. Now we need to put forces on the particle acting at b. And we'll have the weight of the particle. So if it's got a mass m, the weight will be mg. And there's going to be no other forces acting on B. Remember the string is slack. Now this angle theta here occurs in between the weight and the radius. Okay, so put that in as theta, alternate angles there. And the height that the particle rises, the vertical height, will be this distance from A to B. So if we mark that in there, that we'll call, say, h, okay, the height that the particle rises before it collapses in. Now, typical questions that you're going to get with this kind of system will be like, find this speed here that you have to project at a with in order for the particle to reach a certain height or attain a certain speed before it collapses in. Or you might even be asked to find the minimum speed here that will allow this to just reach the top here without collapsing in. We'll talk about that also in this tutorial. But if we just take the general case here where it just reaches this point B and starts to collapse in, then we handle these problems by using energy considerations and also by looking at resolving in towards the center of the circle. I'll show you. Let's first of all resolve in towards the center of the circle. In other words, resolve in the direction B to O. And if we do that, the only force acting towards the center is mg cos theta. So we've got mg cos theta and that force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So that's going to be m 
times VB squared over the radius R. Now I can divide both sides by M and multiply by R and therefore I get that VB squared is equal to RG cosine of the angle theta. Now I'll call this equation 1. And the other thing we do then is we consider energy. So if I just look at energy here. Now if I set the lowest point, that's, that's this point at A, if I just say that the gravitational potential energy there is zero, then by the conservation of energy, then the energy at A, which is purely kinetic energy because it's moving, there's no gravitational potential energy because it's not risen in height, that energy there would be equal to the energy at B. And the energy at B is kinetic energy, it's moving okay, at B, so we've got the kinetic energy at B, and it's also gained gravitational potential energy because it's gained height, height h. So that would be plus a gain in gravitational potential energy at B. You might not set your equation out like this. You might say that the change in kinetic energy, that is the Ke at A minus the Ke at B, is equal to the gain in gravitational potential energy at B. So uh, it's still basically the same equation. So let's fill in our values. For the kinetic energy at A, it's going to be a half m times the speed at A squared, okay, half mva squared. And then we've got the kinetic energy at B, and that's going to be a half m times the speed at B squared, mvb squared. And we've now got the gain in gravitational potential energy at B. And so that's going to be mg times our height here, h. Now when it comes to the height h, what we tend to do is to create a triangle through here from O up here and then across to B in here. A right angle triangle then. And we can see that by trigonometry we've got the height h is equal to this r plus this distance up here. And from this right angle triangle this distance dotted here is going to be r cos theta. So we've got r plus another r cos theta for h. And you could leave it like that. Or you could pull out r as a common factor and you'll have r times 1 plus cosine of theta. I'll call this equation 2. Now I can sub this value here in for h. I've got vb squared from 1 so I should be able to form another equation with this substitution. But before I do that I notice that I've got the mass m in h term, so I could cancel that out. So what I'm going to do now is substitute equation 1 and equation 2, for, that's the value for h, in this above equation here. And I'm also going to multiply by 2, so we get rid of the fraction. So I'll put a multiply by 2. 2. So therefore what we get is VA squared is equal to VB squared but VB squared is RG cos theta so we've got RG cos theta there and then it's plus and then remember we've multiplied through by 2 so it's going to be 2GH so it'll be 2G times H. I'm going to take H as r plus r cos theta. So we've got r plus r cos theta. Now if I simplify this, expanding this bracket, I can see that I've just got a 2gr, so we've got equals 2gr, 
and then I've got 2gr cos theta, which group with this one is going to give me plus 3gr okay, cos theta. So therefore, I can see then that VA is going to be equal to the square root then of what we've got here. But I could pull out a G and an R as a common factor, so it's the root of GR, and then we've got 2 plus 3 cosine of theta. So that's how I would get that minimum speed required there then for it to reach a certain angle before the particle collapsed in. What I want to draw your attention to, though, is another type of question that we can get, and that is, what's the minimum speed you require at the bottom here in order for it to make a complete turn? Well, if that's the case, then that's going to give us the maximum height here. It's going to be 2r. It's going to reach the top. So for the maximum height, Okay, just put that in, maximum height. We know that theta would equal zero. In other words, that leads on to the cosine of theta would be equal to one. So if you substitute that value into here, we've got two plus three, five. So we've got, therefore, that speed at the bottom, VA, is going to be the square root of five gr. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about building these equations then for questions like this.